Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do this zoom through a sunglass lens, or I guess you could do it with an eye effect. So I've just got two clips on the timeline, one in front of the other, and of course this is going to depend on how your clip is shot. In this case, we have a pretty clear shape of a sunglass circle that I can select out, and it's not moving too rapidly across the screen, so it won't be too hard for you to mask it out. If you do happen to be working with a clip where it's just too much going on or lots of blinking or something, you can always choose to freeze frame at a certain point and use that as the end. But to get started with this, just so you can kind of get the workflow, is first I just want to create an overlap between the clips where I want the transition to happen. So I'm going to move this first portion of the clip up to track two, and I'm going to move the second clip down under it to track one and just create a little bit of overlap so that when we do cut out the shape, we will have the bottom clip showing underneath. Now on the top clip, I also just wanna cut this little snippet where they overlap. So a quick shortcut, if you use up and down arrow keys, whatever track is highlighted, you'll hit the ends of that. So I wanna cut at this end where the two meet. So now I just have this little snippet where they overlap. And on this snippet, I want to create some masks. So in the effects control panel under the opacity section, I have the option to do elliptical masks, rectangular, or a free pen drawing. So if you have a complicated shape, you could do a pen tool. But for this simple circular shape, I can get away with using an elliptical mask. So I'm going to move it over to that sunglass shape. And right now it's actually doing the opposite. It's just masking out this section. So I wanna click invert so that I'm masking everything but this section. And I also want to turn on the mask path keyframe animation icon at the beginning so that we can animate things. So at this first keyframe, making sure my program window and my mask one is highlighted so I can adjust it. I'm just gonna move this circle over so that it generally matches this, the shape that we're working with. I can also rotate this a little bit. And these sunglasses aren't perfect circles either, but I can get a pretty good match just like that. And remember, we can add a little bit of feathering. So right now it's at 10, but I can increase the feathering to like 50 and you can't really tell that it's off. So I just wanna make sure I have that keyframe at the very beginning of the clip. And in this case, we're not moving too much. So at this point, if you did just wanna make this a freeze frame, you won't have to do any more work. And the way to do that would be to have either right-clicked inserted a frame hold segment or right here at the end of the clip, add frame hold and it'll just hold this frame and you can complete the rest of the steps that way. But in this case, I am going to do a couple extra steps of just moving this mask. So as I move forward a little bit, I'm gonna move the, the mask over since it's a circle. I really won't have to do too, do too much adjustment. And then I'm gonna move over a couple frames the, the more closely you generate these keyframes, the more accurate your tracking of the mask will be. But you see every time I move over, it's adding a new diamond here, all the way until I get to the end of this little segment. And really, you can see it just took a few seconds. So if I play that back, we should see the sunglass being masked out completely. So now we just kind of have to blend a few things together before we continue. So this first part, right where we cut from no mask to mask, I just want to right click and add default transition there. So it'll cross dissolve in. And I also want to move this cross dissolve transition by clicking and highlighting it. It'll open the effects control panel. I don't want it to be centered at the cut. I actually want to push that transition over so that it begins at the cut. And I'm going to make it much smaller because we don't have that much time on this clip. So the reason I'm making it begin at the cut is because there's nothing underneath. There's no other clip underneath until that cut happens. So we can see instead of cutting to that mask, we now fade into it nicely. Now, as soon as that fade finishes, we want to begin zooming through that mask. So I'm gonna go back to that little clip at the end. And before we start adding keyframes to the scale, I want to just adjust the anchor point. Because right now, if I increase the scale, we're just zooming into the middle. And what I actually want to do is zoom into the glasses. 
So if I highlight the anchor point with the program window and the selection tool active, I can move the anchor point to the middle of that zoom through point and you'll see it'll automatically adjust the position and anchor point for you. And then I'm going to click the stopwatch icon under the scale and then move over to the end of the clip and just zoom through that until we reach the edges completely. So I just have one keyframe going to the next. And as a little touch, I'm also going to right click on that keyframe and go to ease out. That'll make it kind of gently zoom out, just adding a little bit of kind of spice or flavor to the animation rather than just a linear choppy motion. That's kind of the key to this is you don't want anything to look too choppy if you can't help it. If you need to render it, you can press I and O to create in and out points and go to sequence, render in and out because sometimes these effects can get kind of heavy. But you see in this playback, we fade into the mask and then we zoom through it. So you can tweak it and adjust it from there. Uh, another option you have is to add another de default transition at the end, just another cross dissolve kind of near the end just to help things fade out there. And also if you do need some additional expansion to help you fade into the next clip, you can also try to add keyframes under the mask expansion section. So maybe right around the same time your scale starts increasing, you can use the mask expansion. You can use the mask expansion to zoom out as well but you want to make sure you don't do it out of proportion too much. Just like a little bit like that at the end might be able to help you out. So, but that's a basic workflow for this zoom through a sunglass eye transition effect. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out some of my other effects and transitions in the playlists on my channel. Subscribe to stay tuned for all my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.